Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to talk about my new project which is a camera slider. So I have been working on this for quite a while but I finally finished this project in a way that I can at least uh, show it to you and uh, demonstrate how it works. But of course I already discovered a few things which can be improved or made in a better way but maybe I will uh, publish new videos about that. But I want to talk about this project now because it's already working and it works very nicely. So I want to show you and hopefully this will help you to build your own if you want to build a camera slider. So the main purpose of these things of course is that you can make quite fancy uh, photos or series of photos or pictures uh, which you can put together and you can make a very nice uh, time-lapse video. So of course the main thing would be to be able to control the time, speed and maybe the travel distance across this uh, beam here. So I programmed it in a microcontroller and you can do all of these things. But additionally you can control the movement of this uh, rail here with a joystick. And since this is an XY joystick, uh, we are using just one uh, direction, the X direction. So the Y direction will be used in a future iteration of this thing. Uh, but you will see that in some future videos. So since this thing involves a lot of mechanics and a lot of electronics, this is a good opportunity to introduce the sponsor of this video, which is PCBWay. So PCBWay is a service provider specialized in printed circuit board manufacturing and assembly. They made it very simple to order PCBs from them. All you have to do is that you have to click on PCB instant quote, then you have to select quick order PCB, and then you have to click on add Gerber file. Then you select your Gerber file package and upload it. And after a few seconds, your PCB will appear. And then you can customize this PCB according to your needs. You can also order an SMD stencil from them if you want to assemble the board yourself. But if you don't want to make this yourself, you can use their assembly service. So they will source all the parts and they will assemble your board. And also they provide a $5 coupon, which will make everything more easier. So I hope that you like the services that my sponsor can provide. And I hope that uh, you will use them in the future because it's very good to make your own PCB. So let's talk about the parts which I uh, have on this table. So let's group it into two parts. So we have the mechanical part, which is the slider itself, and we have the electronics, which consists of a battery, and then the control unit, which is, let's say, this is a remote controller. So if we start with the mechanism, we have a 20 by 60 uh, V-slot uh, beam or profile. So a six centimeter wide and two centimeter thick profile. So this is a general profile, which is used for this kind of mechanisms, 3D printers also, and so on. Uh, relatively cheap and very easy to work with. And uh, you can get a lot of parts, for example, wheels or this gantry here, which is compatible with this kind of profile. So it's a very nice thing to uh, work with. So I designed the legs for this thing. Hopefully this doesn't fall apart. So the legs look like this. So this has the same shape as the profile inside. And then I just randomly made these triangles into this and then printed it. And on the bottom, I just put this uh, felt uh, disc, which is for furnitures, but it's also perfect for this uh, purpose. So I will share the 3D file for everything which I printed here. But I printed uh, four legs and it's uh, more or less stable. It's uh, stable enough for my goals. And then uh, I can talk about the things which move this uh, gantry back and forth. So we have this gantry and then it's uh, supported by four wheels. And on one side we have just uh, normal screws or bolts going through the plate and then fixing the wheels and uh, the wheels are pushed against the side of this uh, profile. And on the other side, we have two eccentric nuts. So if you turn those nuts, you can uh, tighten the wheels against the side of the profile so you can get rid of the slack and uh, the rail will move very nicely 
if it has a tight fit around the, the edge of these profiles. And then uh, everything is moved with this belt. So this is roughly two meters uh, long. It's a GT2 uh, timing belt. So this is used for 3D printers and similar devices. And on one side where we have the, let's call it tensioner, there's an idler pulley, so it doesn't have any teeth. And on the stepper motor side, which is my side number one, let's say, uh, we have a 20 teeth uh, wheel or pulley here. So this moves uh, the belt back and forth, and we can move in between these two limit switches. So then the holder for the stepper motor is, is also printed. So I just designed some very simple uh, bracket here and then printed it. And also the tensioner is also just the printed uh, stuff. And then we have two limit switches on both sides. So this is side number one and side number two. And how it works is that the wheel of the gantry will hit the switch and then the LED will turn on and uh, it will shut down the motor and it will park it. I also made a homing uh, option because sometimes you want to go from uh, left to right, so in that direction, or you want to go from uh, right to left, so in that direction. So you can uh, put your gantry and the camera on one of these uh, starting positions. So I will show it, but I just tell that the gantry goes, hits the limit switch, and then it starts to move in the other direction as long as the switch is pressed in. And I did this uh, strategy in some of my earlier videos already, so I just borrowed it from there. And I printed a small mount, but this is one of the things which I can improve because this is a very uh, dodgy uh, circuit here. So it works, but it doesn't look nice. So I just use some zip ties and uh, so on, just to keep the uh, circuit and the circuit board in this uh, mount or in this bracket. But this is one thing that can be improved. So then uh, under the bracket here, the step promoter is the simple NEMA 17 step promoter. And uh, then on this gantry, we also have a ball head. So I just use the normal ball head. You can buy this easily from the most popular websites, eBay, Amazon, whatever. And then I just uh, screwed it on this gantry using a bolt. And one thing that you have to uh, be careful about is that these uh, ball heads don't have metric uh, threads. So also this guy here has this uh, yeah, imperial, or I don't know how it's called, uh, type of threads. So you have to have a special uh, bolt to fix uh, this thing against the gantry. So this is all about the mechanism. Let's talk about the controls. So first of all, I have this battery, which is very good. It's a 12 uh, volt battery and 8,000 milliampere hours. So it can run this motor for a while. And this is good because now the whole thing is mobile. And that was my uh, main goal to make it mobile. So I can uh, just throw it in my car, go somewhere and uh, make a time-lapse video. So. This thing provides 12 volts and then it goes into this uh, 2.5 millimeter jack plug and then it goes into uh, the box. So first I just talk about the outside, what we can see. So here we have this uh, uh, GX16, I think, uh, connectors. So one goes to the stepper motor and one goes to the two limit switches. So the limit switches, each limit switch requires three uh, wires, ground, VCC, which is five volts in this case, and the signal which will go to one of the GPIO pins of the microcontroller. So in total, we have four wires for the two uh, limit switches. So that's all about the connections. We have a joystick. It's an XY joystick. So the X will move along the X axis, obviously, but the Y is not yet implemented. So that will be one of my future idea to implement something for the y-axis. So when you move the joystick up and down, something will happen here on the gantry. Uh, you can already maybe guess what will happen. And then we have a small uh, 
OLED display. So this will have a menu and it will show you some options, what you can do with this uh, gantry and with the, with the slider. And this is a rotary encoder with a switch, as you can hear. So this will help you to enter the details, how long you want to move, how fast you want to move, and so on and so on. And also you can stop and start everything. So let's uh, go inside this box a bit and let's open it up. So hopefully now it's a bit more visible. So this is the back of the joystick, this is the display and the rotary encoder. So let's start from the power supply part. So the 12 volt comes in and one part of the 12 volt goes directly to the stepper motor driver, which is a DRV8825 uh, type of stepper motor driver. And I'm using this with 3200 steps per turn, a micro stepping. So one over 16th uh, of a step because the higher the micro stepping, the smoother the movement of this uh, gantry. And since we don't want to move very fast, it's quite nice that we set the micro stepping to a low value or I mean high value. So one turn will be divided into a lot of lot of steps, in this case 3200 steps. And also it makes the movement more smoother and makes the motor more silent. So that's what we have here. So one side of the 12 volt directly, so from the battery directly goes to the stepper driver and that will uh, move the stepper motor. And uh, the other 12 volt goes to this voltage regulator. And from the other side, we get five volts to the rest of the electronics, which is the two limit switches, the joystick, the rotary encoder, the OLED display, and finally an Arduino Nano. So we have an Arduino Nano, which can be also improved because if you want to have the information on the display in real time, especially when you move the joystick, the Arduino Nano seems to be a bit slow for this purpose. So this could be uh, replaced to a STM32 microcontroller maybe a blue pill or even better a black pill so you can have over 100 megahertz uh, clock speed so the 5 volt uh, is used for these rest of the devices and then the arduino nano just handles everything so it handles the limit switches it handles the stepper motor driver the rotor encoder the joystick and then finally the display so now I want to show you this in, in action. So just put this back. So this battery has an on-off switch on its side, so I just turn it on. And then uh, the display comes on. And we have several options, and of course I will uh, explain you the source code and everything. So I will show you what happens here. So we have a homing option, probably you can see because the display is tiny. So homing option, uh, there will be like two uh, options here, one and two. And this is home number one, and this side, the right side is home number two. So the motor side is the, let's say, real home. And here you will have the zero position. And if you go in that direction, that will be the positive direction. That's how I programmed and assembled everything. So if I press this, now I can switch between number one and number two. I select number one and if I press the button again, then the gantry slowly will go back to the home position. So let's see how this works. And maybe I will speed up the video because this moves uh, relatively slowly. Or I can just talk. So this will go back uh, to the home position. So it is getting closer and closer to this switch. It presses the switch the LED will be red, so it will be turned on. And as long as the switch is pressed, then the microcontroller will instruct the stepper motor to start to move the gantry in this direction to release the switch. And that will be our zero position, the, let's say, absolute zero or the origin. And then whatever we move in this direction, that will be always a positive uh, movement. And if we want to move in this direction, then uh, we will be always moving in relative uh, distances. So if, if the gantry is here and I want to move here, I have to move like minus 20 centimeters. 
But if I want to move from here to here, that's like plus 20 centimeters. So now it will be... It's parked. And now this also has an information that it is parked. So the second option is the joystick. So I show you. So I have to enter this. And then if I press the joystick right, then of course the gantry will follow the joystick. So let's see. So as you can see, it moves and it's relatively silent. Of course now it vibrates and this board or table amplifies the vibrations a little bit, but it's not so bad. And usually for time lapse, especially if you record for 10 minutes, hours or something, you will not use this kind of noise, so it doesn't matter. And uh, the joystick follows, or the motor follows the position of the joystick. So if I just uh, press the joystick a little bit, then the gantry will move slowly. So I try to show it. So now it's, it's very slow, and now it's fast. And of course it works in the other direction as well. So this moves nicely. So then the next uh, menu item is the distance and then we have speed and then we have time. And these are of course uh, always uh, connected but the main parameter is the distance. So how much uh, distance you want to cover here. Now I have roughly 70 centimeters of uh, space between the two limit switches and then uh, I can decide whether I depend on this distance whether I depend on the speed, so the distance is kept constant and I can change the speed so the time will be recalculated or I want to say, say that uh, let's cover this wall distance, 70 centimeters, in one hour. So then the device will recalculate the speed and it will tell you that it will take this much time uh, or it will take this much speed to cover the 70 centimeters in one hour. And uh, whenever you change one of these uh, parameters, the others will be recalculated, whichever is relevant. So now, let's say we want to move 10 centimeters, so we go in that direction 10 centimeters. And let's say I want to cover it in one minute. So now this will move 1.7 millimeters per second. So that is roughly fine. And now the last menu item is that I can start the movement. So if I start this, if I press start, then this gantry will move here. And in one minute it will cover the 10 centimeters. And it's already moving. And it's relatively slow. So you can, uh, for example, cover some nice sunsets or something else with this kind of uh, movement. So it stopped and it finished uh, the movement, so that's really nice. And basically that's all. So I can just show the other homing. So now if we go to the position number two, then it will end up at this limit switch here. And of course in the program you can change the speeds, you can change the micro stepping, you can change whatever. So this movement can be much faster, for example. And one thing which is very important is that I haven't implemented any kind of accelerations here. So you cannot use too high speeds because the motor will stall and uh, it will not move at all. And I'm using the Axel Stepper library. That's a very popular and very nicely built uh, stepper motor uh, controlling library. So you will see how this thing is assembled and how it works. So now we almost reached uh, this, this side. We will see how it stops and hopefully it will not fail. And it's done. So it's parked. And just for fun, let's use the joystick again.
So that's all about the product itself. And uh, now I will go to my computer and I will guide you through the software which is running on the Arduino. So you will see how you can set up your own Arduino to control the uh, slider in the same way. And after showing that, uh, let's say, programming guide, I will show you some footage that I made with this uh, slider with different cameras and settings. So you can decide whether it's worth it or not to build this thing. So let's go to my computer and let's see what is inside the microcontroller. So I prepared the source code and uh, let's see how it works and how we can control this uh, camera slider. So since we are using a stepper motor, we are using the XR stepper library. So this is how it is uh, initialized, let's say. So we include the header file and then we create uh, this stepper. And with the number 8 and number 9, we define the pins, which will be responsible for the direction and the step pins on the step promoter driver. And as you can see, the pin number 8 will be the step pin and the pin number 9 will be the direction pin. And then we have the wire because of the I squared C. And then this should be basically a copy paste uh, from your side if you are using this code. This is how we are using the uh, OLED display that I'm using. Uh, it can be that you have a bit different address, but usually this is the address of the uh, display. And then uh, I put a notice here because it could be that this is not the best uh, library for this application. I will look for some more lightweight uh, library and uh, I will check it out and maybe rewrite the code according to the new library. If you know any good libraries for this kind of display, please let me know and uh, then I will add that uh, new code as well. And then we move towards the analog pins, which will be responsible for the joystick reading. So this is the X uh, direction uh, pin, I call it like this, and I am using the A0 uh, analog uh, pin. And then we have a value, uh, of course, uh, which is the value coming from the output of the AD converter and that has to be stored so I just use this integer and then I also have an average because uh, when I start up the Arduino I will read uh, the input the A0 several times and then I will average that number and you will see why I do that and then during the uh, operation of this uh, circuit I will calculate the difference between this previously initialized average value and the current value of the joystick. And basically this is all regarding the analog pins. So then we have a bunch of uh, other input pins or output pins. So what we have here is these three guys are for the rotary encoder. So two for the rotation part and one for the switch part. And then we have two limit switches, so I'm using these two uh, pins 10 and 11 for detecting the limit switches. And then finally I have this commented, but if you want to use it, uh, you can define an enable pin for the stepper motor driver, because most of these drivers have an enable pin. So that basically switches the power on and off. Uh, on the coils of the stepper motor. So if your stepper motor runs hot without moving, this might help. Uh, but uh, I don't have this issue right now, so I just uh, keep this uh, as a comment. So these are basically just for comparing the currently read value of the rotary encoder and the previous value. And why do we need this? We need this because we can know the direction of the rotation from the outcome of the comparison. So if you compare the CLK now with the CLK previous, you can determine the direction of the rotation. And this is important because you want to increase and decrease the value of certain variables. And this is how you do it. And then finally, we have a bunch of other variables. So I will quickly go through them. So this is just for the button, whether we pressed it or not, uh, the rotary encoders button. And then we have this menu counter, so this will tell us where we are standing in the menu. And as you can see, it is volatile, which means that we can change it within the interrupt. Uh, then we have this rotary button time, so this is just a timer for the rotary encoder. 
uh, or more precisely for its button. So we cannot press the button uh, several times within a certain time period. So this is sort of a debouncing. And then uh, there is another sort of debouncing, so the same principles for the limit switch. So once the limit switch is pressed, uh, whatever we do with the limit switch within a certain uh, predefined time period, nothing uh, will be done. And then uh, we have the travel distance, the travel speed and the travel time. All of them are volatile because this is uh, the three or these are the three variables. Uh, which we can change when we uh, change the input parameters of the slider. And then the, uh, based on these three variables, we have further two variables which will be, let's say, forwarded to the uh, step promoter driver. So from these three uh, values, we can calculate how much steps we need, uh, how, how, much, how many steps we need to step uh, to complete the certain distance and uh, what should be the uh, speed in steps per second. I'm just using velocity here because uh, sort of a synonym of the speed, but I, I did not want to use the same kind of uh, word just to remove some confusion or avoid some confusion. And then the microstepping is very important when we want to calculate the amount of displacement based on the number of steps. And now I'm using 3,200 steps per turn. So when the shaft of the step promoter does one full turn, uh, 3,200 uh, 3, steps are done. So it's a very smooth uh, stepping. And uh, this makes the step promoter more silent and uh, a bit more precise. So we can move uh, more slowly because uh, we can cover one full rotation of the step promoter's shaft with much more steps. So this is very useful if you can increase this uh, value. But uh, always you always have to make sure that you have the same value set up on your step promoter driver. And then these booleans here, except this integer, uh, these are uh, sending the status for the microcontroller about the selected menu item. So this will determine whether we are in the homing option, uh, whether we completed the homing, whether we try to move the things with the joystick and so on and so on. So all these variables tell what they are doing. And the homing position is basically, we have two positions for the homing since there are two limit switches. So one and the number one uh, homing position is the same as the number one limit switch, and that's the motor side, the stepper motor side, and on the other side we have the tensioner, that's the number two. And then uh, we have the value changed, so and, and the menu changed, so these are responsible for updating the display whenever we do something. And then uh, this is also for uh, menu related uh, things. And then this is a position uh, or this is a variable which holds the value of the position when we hit the limit switch, one of the limit switches. Then here, just as a reminder, I put uh, the microstepping values and uh, switch values uh, here as a small table for this specific driver. This is what I use. And then I use this. So the zero and one uh, dip switch on my breakout board set to low and the third one, which is the M2, is set to high. So this will uh, instruct the step promoter driver to use the 3200 uh, steps per turn microstepping. Then we arrive to the setup. So this is the part which only runs once when you power up the device. So of course we start the serial. We don't need this in fact, but I needed this for a lot of debugging, but uh, otherwise this is not necessary. But of course we need the I squared C and you can increase the clock uh, to have more smoother display. So this can help to uh, avoid blinking, for example, or flashing of the display. Uh, but I don't know how useful it is here. And then uh, this is again something standard which you can get from the Adafruit library and this is how they basically use it. So if the initialization of the display was not successful, then the code gets stuck here. 
and uh, you will get a message through the serial port. And here I have to put a notice here. When I was debugging this code, uh, I put a lot of serial.println in my code because I wanted to see if the speeds were calculated properly, the number of steps were calculated properly, I wanted to see where the code gets stuck and so on and so on. And in fact, if you use a lot of this, you will run out of the memory of the device and even though the code will be uh, compiled and you can upload the code and start the code on your microcontroller, it will get stuck here because actually when the code runs on the microcontroller, it will uh, run out of the resources. So make sure that you don't uh, put a lot of uh, unnecessary thing if you are using Arduino Nano because you will run out of resources. And actually this, uh, let's say, issue brings me back to the first notice that I put in the code that I have to look for a more lightweight library for this display. But so far uh, this was working okay, but if I want to make this code more complex then of course uh, I have to make this display related thing more better. So this is done and then we define the pins. So we have the analog input and then we have the three inputs for the rotary encoder and uh, for the switch I don't have any onboard uh, resistors and capacitors so it's not debounced electronically unlike these other two pins so I'm using the input pull-up otherwise this will just uh, float and I will have issues reading the proper uh, status of the switch when it is pressed and then if we have the enable pin uh, used if we use it then of course we have to define it as an output and then in this code it will be the pin number seven and that will uh, switch the stepper motor driver on and off and then we have the two limit switches and of course here we need the input pull up as well so this is fine uh, I put a notice here that the default value is 1 for me so originally the pins are high when the limit switch is not uh, pressed in or not triggered and when the limit switch is pressed in so we technically switch the limit switch then that pin is pulled to the ground so then uh, it becomes zero and that's when the code, the corresponding part of the code is being triggered. So here we initialize the values for the joystick. I will show you this function later. We read the current status of the rotary encoder. So the next time when we turn the rotary encoder, uh, the new uh, status of these pins the CRK and DT pins will be compared to now these values and then we can determine the direction of the rotation and of course one of the pins of the rotor encoder is an interrupt pin in this case is the CRK and this will uh, when the CRK changes then it will run the rotor encoder function and within that function we will do some stuff which you will see and that will control the menu the movement of the of the uh, carriage and then uh, the modification of the values and now we arrived to the stepper motor part so here we just have to have some arbitrary maximum speed value uh, you have to keep in mind that this is limited by the clock frequency of your device since I'm using Arduino Nano I'm a bit limited but for this application where we actually need slow speeds this will be fine we will not hit the limit for the stepping and acceleration well maybe I don't have to uh, tell this to the code because we are not using accelerations but just to be on the safe side I just uh, have some random value and then finally if we are using the enable pin then we can pull it to high or maybe we have to pull it to low it depends on the step promoter driver uh, circuit and then uh, here I just update the menu position so now the display will show the first menu. So let's see what this initial values uh, does. So I just uh, go there. So this is the function that we are looking for. We have the temp x which is a temporary uh, value for the x uh, reading and then we have a for loop with 50 iterations so we, we are reading the analog x pin 50 times 
uh, sum it up into this variable and then we divide that variable by 50 so then we get the average so this will be the average value so if the if everything is idealized and we have a 10 bit uh, AD converter in the Arduino Nano and the joystick is right in the middle then we should read 511 or 512 so that should be the value of this but it's not exactly that so that's that's why it's good to read a lot of uh, average here or a lot of values and average it so then this will be our average value and everything will be uh, related to this value when you move the joystick and here just as a reminder I print the value of the of the analog value so we see what happens so we go back to the main loop and what we do here is the read analog so now I just quickly go through the loop uh, this will read the joystick if we are in the joystick menu and then if we have the start slider selected as true then we run the stepper motor to the position this is the part where we basically move the slider or the gantry uh, based on the distance speed and time that we have set up uh, in the menu uh, then we check the rotary encoders button whether we pressed it or not and uh, this loop runs quick enough to register the button press so don't worry the button doesn't need any uh, interrupt routine then if the menu change is true then we update the position of the menu so basically if we turn the rotary encoder then we uh, call this function uh, if we selected something so update value selection is true then we update that so we indicate towards the user that we selected one of the menu and then value changed true then we update the value so for example if you are in the speed uh, menu and you turn the rotor encoder and you uh, increase or decrease the value of the uh, of the speed variable then this variable becomes true so in the next iteration of the loop this function will be called and you will see the most recent value of the speed and then finally we also check if the limit switch was pressed and again with each iteration and the stepper motor here just stepped by one step so uh, what I try to say here is that if this stepped one step and it pressed the switch we check if the speed switch was pressed so then uh, the stepper motor will not continue its way if we detected a switch pressing here because then this function will disable everything and when the loop comes here and then arrives here uh, this function will not be able to run anymore so it's uh, yeah quite safe I would say because everything just runs once in one iteration so if something is being stopped or interrupted or something everything will stop very quickly so now we go back to the loops uh, beginning and we see that this is our next function so let's see what is happening here so this is the wall function which handles the joystick and if we are in this menu then we run this part of code otherwise we do not do anything so then we have this analog x uh, variable and the value of it is the current value of the x pin so the a0 pin and then once we have this analog x we calculate the difference between the currently read value and the average that we calculated when we started the uh, circuit and then that will be the average difference and what I do here is that if the average difference is larger than 25 which means that we are like 25 values away from the center of the joystick so we moved let's say a bit noticeably uh, uh, away then we let the uh, stepper motor to run and how we do this is that we take this difference multiplied by 3 this is more or less a arbitrary or empirical value you can maybe increase this or decrease this depends on how vigorously or slowly you want to move with the joystick and then uh, 
when this uh, is like triggered or called then uh, the run speed will be able to run so then with this we will step the stepper motor by one step basically but uh, with this speed so if we keep the joystick at the same place then this value will be always roughly the same so the run speed will continue the pulling of the stepper motor because we always enter this part of the code and as as you could see in my demonstration the joystick will uh, make the carriage move nicely but if uh, this condition is not satisfied we uh, set the speed to zero and of course we also do not call this at all so we just don't move the uh, stepper motor at all uh, so this is basically just a safety let's say if, if we use this run speed somewhere else outside of uh, of this read analog and the speed is not set to zero while we are still in the menu then it can be that the stepper motor just starts to move and then here I remove this but actually the value change should be true here so uh, what we should do here is we should update the display and print the most recent value of the joystick uh, basically I wanted to uh, show this value but uh, this makes the stepper motor very slow so I think that this uh, library or maybe my not so efficient code uh, does not run fast enough uh, to print the new value between two steps so that's why I made the comment here but in the next iteration of the code I might uh, improve this so then uh, let's see uh, what this does because uh, we have to check these a bit later so how we check the rotary button so what we do here is that we read the rotary SW uh, pin and that will be the value and if the value is 0 and at least one second elapsed uh, since the last button press then we enter this part and what happens is that if the menu counter so it checks where we are standing in the menu uh, was zero then we flip uh, the current status of the stepper homing selected uh, ball in variable so what happens is that if this was true then when we press the button it becomes false and the other way around it if it was false then it becomes true and then here if the recent change made this value to become false then we go to the homing so basically what happens here is that we exit the menu and uh, then with that we also approve that we want to do a homing so then this will uh, happen but at this moment this is not a perfect uh, let's say implementation because the homing does not allow you to stop the motor so if you change your mind during homing uh, you have to unplug the power to stop the motor so this is not the best implementation right now and then here again we just flip the status again 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 and then here what we do is we, we can change the status of course we have to do that but if we recently quit from the menu and there are still steps to do then we also stop the motor so this becomes very useful because at least when we have the distance speed time based movement of the carriage we can stop it anytime so then after we stopped uh, we just update the display and let the user know that it was stopped and here we just read the button time again so again from this moment when the code reaches this line uh, there has to be one second elapsed to be able to enter the part above here so the highlighted part this and then of course the selection has to be updated so then we have other buttons or switches to be more precise the limit switches so let's see how we handle them so this is the limit switch pressed function and basically these two functions are the same except that uh, the signs 
in the set speed functions are the opposite because we are moving in the opposite directions when we move towards uh, the switch number one and switch number two. So I just explained one switch and I think you should be able to guess the other. So what we do here within uh, one limit switches uh, part is that first we read the switch all the time. So actually we read the limit switch with each iteration of the uh, loop as I mentioned before and for me uh, it is high by default so it should become zero if something happens to the switch so we press it and then if we press it, it is put to the ground and then we have to see if the joystick movement is selected because if it is selected that means that we draw the uh, carriage against the limit switch so the first thing that we have to do is that we have to stop uh, the joystick's movement so we make this false and that means I will show you very quickly so that means that uh, the code will not enter this part because if the joystick movement selected tr is true then of course we enter this part we read the joystick's value and then we make the step promoter move but of course since we made this false uh, we will not read the joystick anymore and we will not let the step promoter to move anymore so this is fine so now we arrived to this part and uh, first of all I commented this as you can see because in this case, in the zero case, I don't want to save the temporary position of the limit switch where the limit switch was hit. So we don't have to save this. Actually, I can uh, delete this because this will be our zero position. So now we just stop the step promoter and uh, with this speed that I'm using for the joystick, it will stop basically immediately. So then this part again, it's not really necessary because this would uh, basically just run it uh, if this is in a sort of a loop so this can be also let's say neglected and then uh, we can reset this uh, timer so we can wait 300 milliseconds and after that we can just uh, register another limit switch hit it if it happened again but it should not happen and then uh, we can make this to move to a specific place which is zero and this can be uh, useful if you have your zero point somewhere else but what I do is that until the limit switch is on the ground so while the, the value of it is zero then we run the stepper motor towards the positive direction so away from the motor uh, with, uh, with a relatively low speed and this part of the code will run until we do not release the switch. So the switch is released, motor stops immediately, and then that becomes our origin here. And uh, this is again not necessary here, but it might be useful for the other uh, limit switch. And here, I don't want to explain it again, but what happens here is the same, but since we uh, hit the uh, limit switch, number two on the other side on the tensioner side by moving in the positive direction then when we are moving away from the limit switch to release it we have to move in the negative direction so the speed becomes negative so then with this 200 steps per second we move towards the motor so away from the tensioner and we will actually release the the switch and here I actually save the position but in this part of the code or this version of the code we are not using uh, these but maybe they might pop up in a future uh, iteration so now it's time to look at the rotary encoders behavior so here we can do several things uh, either we navigate in the menu or we increase or decrease or yeah, change the value of a variable so first of all we do those parts which change uh, the value of one of the variables so if the stepper homing is selected so we are in the homing then we can uh, choose between the two options so this is maybe a bit uh, over engineered because there should be some easier options to do this but uh, this is how I did it right now because it was quick to do it at least so we just read uh, the current value of the rotary CRK uh, pin and then we do some comparison which will uh, help us so these two which will help us to yeah determine the direction 
So then what happens here is the following. So if uh, the homing position is low, uh, smaller than two, then we increase the value of the homing position variable. So actually it becomes two if it's uh, one. That, that's the only thing that can happen. And if the homing position equals one, then we do not do anything. But if it's not one and the other option can only be two, then we decrease the value. So from two, we decreased it to one. And then we let the code know that the value is changed, so it has to update it. And uh, then we also update the previous value, which is now the CRK now, so the current value of the rotary encoder. Then if the joystick movement is selected, we do not do anything because we cannot do or we don't want to do anything with the rotary encoder. Uh, maybe here we can change the multiplier, but uh, that might be a further uh, update. But uh, yeah, I don't want to do anything here with the rotary encoder. And then, yeah, this is quite straightforward. So we check where we rotated. And then if this was the case, then we increase the distance. And if this was the case, we decrease the distance. And then uh, when we change the distance, we have to recalculate the time. Uh, speed is kept constant, and then the time is recalculated. And before anyone comments, yeah, this is a dirty practice, because in an interrupt routine, you should not run uh, functions and stuff like that. Uh, actually, this could be in the main loop, and then I can just use another boolean and change it. And then if it is true, then I let this function run once. But uh, now this is how I handle it. This is not a very uh, computationally heavy thing. So it's basically a division or a multiplication, I don't remember. So it's, uh, it's a very simple task. And we are not time critical in this part, in the menu. So it's fine. And then if we change the speed, it's, it's the same. So we check how the things uh, changed with the rotary encoder. And based on that, either we increase or decrease the speed. And the distance is not disturbed. That's kept the same. And we recalculate the time. So this is what we have here. And again, dirty practice, but it works. And then finally, if we change the time, uh, then we can change it by 0 0.1. Maybe for these also we have to uh, think about the units, but this is how it is now. So it's an integer change, but here it's uh, 0 0.1 plus or minus. And then uh, the distance, again, it's, it is kept same. So whenever we recalculate something, either we recalculate the speed or the time, but never the distance. That is only changed manually. Uh, so here we recalculate the speed. And that's all. And here, if we start the slider, we don't do anything with the rotary encoder itself. So we just use the button and that's all. And finally, if uh, nothing was selected, that means that we are in the main menu and we are navigating uh, between the options or among the options. And what happens there is that we have a menu counter and either we increase the value of it or decrease it. And what I did in this part is that uh, if it is smaller than 5, we let it increase, but if it is not smaller than 5, so actually it becomes 5, or it would become 5, then we make this value to 0, so we go back to the beginning, so it becomes like a ring. And we do the same in the other direction, so, and then in, in this part, uh, if the menu counter is larger than 0, then we decrease it. So if it's one and then we decrease it, uh, then it becomes zero, that's allowed. But then it would be minus one. So if it was zero, so this is not true anymore, then with the next turn of the, of the rotary encoder, then it becomes five. So from the bottom of the menu, we ended up on the top of the menu. So then uh, we went on the other direction in the ring. And then we have to let the know that the menu was changed and we again update the uh, status. So then let's continue the journey in the code and let's see what we can check. So we can check these uh, three other functions. So basically this is how we handle the menu. So I will try to be quick with this because I've been explaining this a uh, lot. So let's say what happens when we change the menu. 
So when we change the rotor encoder in the menu and we change the value of the menu counter, then we switch between the menu items. And what happens is that uh, this switch, uh, first of all, we clean the display entirely and we reset the size of the text to one. So that's the general uh, font size. And then we set the text color to white. And then we check the menu counters value. And if it's zero, that's our homing. So we just print the corresponding parts. And if it's number one, then the joystick. And we uh, when we have this case number one, we print the corresponding parts. Uh, case number two, then that will be the distance. Three is the speed. And then time and then the start of the slide. And after these happened, then of course we uh, step out from the switch with this uh, bracket here, and then we use this display.display .display in parentheses here, uh, which will actually print the text on the, on the display. And then here we set the menu change to false, so it will not be called with the next iteration of the code. So this is how we uh, update the menu and then let's see how we update the selection so again text size is one so normal and the color is white so when the selection becomes true for each case what we do is that to the zero zero position so before the text before the the let's say title of the menu item we put this uh, symbol there and what it does is just indicates the user that, hey, this is the selected menu. Uh, and then here we do a bit more if the start slider is selected, because when we select that menu, we actually start the slider. So here uh, with this, I clear the previous text, which was basically the text from the menu. And uh, then with a bit larger text size I print started and then that's just the printing part then I again recalculate the speed and then I convert the values these functions has, have to be checked uh, and then first we have to use the stepper.move function and tell the stepper motor or the tell the code the access stepper library that uh, we want to move this amount of steps and after this, we also have to set the speed. And this is very important that after the move function, we have to set the speed. And this is not really necess necessary because we already set the maximum speed to 5,000 steps per second when we initialized uh, the whole thing in the setup. So maybe I can remove this to avoid any confusion. And then if uh, any of these things are false, we enter this part and we just remove the this symbol from there, this larger symbol. And then uh, that will indicate that we exited the menu and that will tell the user that it can move the rotary encoder and navigate among the menu items again. Then how the value is updated is again, uh, large font. So this is the center of the screen basically where we print some kind of information and then clear we, this part clears uh, the display so it's ready to update the display and then based on the menu, count, menu counter uh, either we print the homing position so number one or two or the joysticks position but as I said this is not implemented then we can print the travel distance the travel speed and the travel time and these are the user input values and then we print it and then we don't let the code enter here again. And now comes a little bit of mathematics, basically, basically here. So of course we have this V equals S over T. This is what we use. So the travel speed is basically 10 times the travel distance because here the travel distance is given in centimeters. So we want to use millimeters uh, because our unit will be millimeters per second. So that's why we use. And since the travel time is given in minutes, we want to convert it to seconds. So again, there is a 60 times multiplications. So S over T, this is done. 
so we get travel speed in millimeter per second and here I just wrote it down how it's uh, how it works if we recalculate the time basically just this equation is rearranged so s over v so what we have here is of course travel distance expressed in millimeters divided by the travel speed which is millimeters per second so you see the units are matching here so here also shown this is before conversion and millimeter this guy here divided by millimeter per second divided by 60 and that will give us basically the minutes so the travel time will be expressed in minutes 0 0.5 minutes so 30 seconds and so on and so on so these values are in SI units basically but we want to translate this for the stepper motor and that needs uh, steps as a distance and uh, steps per second as a speed but here comes the trick we can use different pulley sizes and that's very important to know what's the size and what's the pitch diameter so basically the diameter uh, when the belt covers uh, the the pulley teeth and that is basically for a 12 millimeter or 20 teeth uh, a pulley wheel GT2 uh, pulley is 12.73 millimeters and this is important because when you calculate the steps uh, first you want to calculate the distance which is moved by the belt itself and you can get it uh, basically in the same way that you think about the circumference of the of the pulley wheel and then if you turn one uh, full rotation uh, that means that you have the d times pi so the diameter times the pi uh, distance made by the belt so basically one rotation is the circumference of the of the pulley wheel and uh, that is also the linear displacement of the of the linear carriage because that's the distance that you pull the belt with so what we do here is that we have the millimeters and here what we have is basically we have the micro stepping divided by uh, the circumference so in fact this uh, formula would look better if I would do the division here so if I divide the total distance in millimeters with the distance here so basically the circumference of the uh, pulley wheel and then multiplied by the micro stepping then that would make a bit more sense because basically the ratio of this number and this number tells you how much turns you need to do because the ratio basically tells you how many times you can uh, cover the distance here with the circumference of the of the pulley wheel and then if you multiply it with this number then it will tell you how many steps you actually have to do so I don't know if this came true as I explained but uh, I can see it in front of me uh, as I can imagine it that it, it makes more sense but uh, I hope you still understand how this equation works and then finally we just calculate the velocity so the speed defined in steps per second and then again we have the travel speed in millimeters per second and then we have the micro stepping divided by the uh, circumference of the uh, pulley wheel and finally we have this uh, last function I think I skipped this yes so this is the stepper homing that we can initiate from the menu so this is when you can have the homing position 1 at the motor side and homing position 2 at the uh, tensioner side so I will just explain this because this one here is just different with this symbol or sign here so let's explain uh, this uh, function so originally my limit switch is 1 so as long as it is 1 we move in the negative direction towards the motor and this is the speed that I used it could be maybe faster so then the wall code just iterates in this part because this is a while so it uh, it cannot break out until uh, 
this condition is not changed. And when it becomes zero, then we go to another while. So again, we will iterate in this guy here. So as long as it is zero, so the step, so the limit switch is pressed in, then uh, it is zero. Then we move in the positive direction in order to release the limit switch. And then when it is released, this becomes one again, and then we move here. So we set up the current position to zero. So that's the absolute zero position, the origin. And again, I put a notice here that in this kind of code or this style of coding, I cannot really, or at this moment, I cannot uh, interrupt the homing. So the only thing that you can do is remove the power plug and then it will stop. But uh, I will uh, make a workaround for this and implement it in a much nicer way. And then for the homing position, it's basically the same but with the opposite signs. So we are going towards the limit switch two. So we are going in the positive direction. And once we reached it, so we pressed in the trigger uh, or we pressed in the switch, so we triggered it. Then we move towards the negative direction in order to release the switch. So this is now moving away from the tensioner and going towards the motor. But this is, we are basically talking about maybe fractions of millimeter or maybe a millimeter. So. There are not too many movements here. And after this happened, we just redraw the wall display. Uh, this is the menu position and we move to the center of the screen uh, by changing the cursor position and we print parked. So the user will know that we are parked. So basically this was the wall uh, code. It was a bit long explanation, but I hope it worth the time because now you will have a good overview of this and you will know how this code is uh, working and how you can modify it and so on and so on but sorry for the long code you can always skip it uh, before showing you the footage i just want to ask you to please visit my website curiousscientist.tech because you can see the parts i use under the tools menu you can have the drawings you can have uh, the schematics and you can have the 3D files for the printed parts. So you can get all the resources uh, that you need. Also the source code will be uploaded there with all these comments and everything. So you will find uh, everything and you can modify the code as you want. So now uh, I made a few uh, small footages. So I will show you how this uh, thing performs and I will show you yeah, what are the drawbacks. I will maybe write some text over the video. So I hope you like this video. I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.